every one of you watching this screen. Look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of cushions. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hi, this is uh, Franz Cantor, cartoonist, illustrator, toon talker, and I'm here with Jim Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. Right. So what and have we got here we're today? We're doing Jason the Golden Fleece, and why we're doing Jason the Golden Fleece is not your everyday cartoon book. Yeah, but it's an illustrated children's book, but yeah, it, it has a very significant past it, it because this in, was one of my very first. Yeah, it came um, out in 1968 loves. when you were just a kid. Yeah. So um, this is put out by uh, Paul Hamlin, uh, oh, sorry, Purnell Books, which I think is a subsidiary of Paul Hamlin. Yeah. Um, it's British. seen better days, as you can see, because yeah. it's actually my... You shouldn't have taken it to my school. My original... <laughs> you shouldn't, shouldn't have taken, have taken it to school. It to school. Um, so this is a book illustrated by... Franz Cantor, 1A. Yeah. So it's a story about Jason and the Golden Fleece. Oh, that's okay? where the Golden Fleece book. comes from. Yeah. Okay. So let me just explain this a little bit here. Um, it's illustrated by Janet and Anne Graham Johnstone. They were sisters. Janet and Anne Johnstone, or Graham Johnstone, sorry, um, illustrated a lot of these um, mythological books for kids. Um, they did one on the Iliad, I think. See, that's the classical thing of the, of the, the fleece on the tree, but what's a dragon doing around protecting it? Well, this is actually a simplified version they would have been referencing, like um, Greek... Urns. Yeah, but, but that's not a that's, a, that's a Chinese dragon. Very Chinese-ish, yeah, very, because they also did, um, they were influenced by um, Persian art as well, Persian The miniatures. girls, the girls? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, but, the, you know, I've... so. So this was incredibly exciting oh, to look... me because I'm looking at these pictures and the way that they're designed they're referencing the amphoras and the plates and the things from ancient Greece, where you had these sort of um, oh, the pottery, yes, two-dimensional yes. uh, created, you know, heroes. Yeah. Very stylized in a way, and stylized, very, but at the same stylized. time, so the, even the hair is all uh, curly and it's in a certain place. It's not all over. Yeah. And they're still referencing a lot of the decorative um, elements yes. from the the source material. Yeah. So you'll see that quite a lot. Some lovely, beautiful, um, delicate, you know. They love to draw fairies and little girls um, three-quarter view from behind, showing their little neck curls and little pink ears and eyelashes and stuff like that. They did this a lot. I can they see... Loved, they did a lot of children paintings. I can see how you're... Of been... that era, the 19... Well, early, late 50s, early 60s. They were the market. Yeah. But the thing is, um, this, uh... I mean, look at this, you know, look at this Greek trireme. This is the first time I've seen a Greek trireme, a Greek ship, first time. And it's really magnificent. It's, it's a master, masterpiece in stylization and, and utilitarian. It's, it's a brilliant machine. So um, these again, look at these horses, right? That you might be... You, you might be confused and saying, Have we, are we looking at a book of um, Hercules, Disney's Hercules? Well, I mean, they were going from the same source material, weren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, if, if you look at well, the... Well, this, this looks Egyptian to me. Well, they would be referencing a lot yeah. of things from... They would have gone to the well, British the Museum, stole which so much, the biggest... The Greeks uh, stole a lot of stuff off the, the, um, the, the Egyptians. They did. Uh, they did. I didn't know that, but okay. Good. I'm, I'm not that up on the, uh, the things, but I'm sure they would have um, had some consensus on chariots. The ram with the fleece of gold. Yeah, so these are, you know, these are grape trees or something. These three are leaf, sea, sea three leaf clover trees. Well, whatever that, 
they're very stylized so you know yeah. you've got a very good um, understanding of the the, the decorative qualities yeah. of um, of that uh, of, of the topic of the genre lightly right? so lightly Greek design myths, of color here Greek amphora in as of into, into the material yeah very stylized as yeah. well yeah so you know I mean you 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 could actually say that you I mean if you was if you were drawing illustrations character designs for Hercules um, and you would you would definitely have this book you'd have access to these pictures because they're so Iconic. They're so incredible. Mm. Look at the hooves on this on this centaur. Yeah, this is magnificent. So it's a, it's the same time. It's it's decorative and descriptive, and it's very evocative. That's the thing about their work. It's so evocative of the subject. You know, so it, it actually feels like a Greek myth, like you're reading yeah. an amphora or a dish yeah. or something, a plate. Yeah, with all of these designs come to life oh, in gross. full color. You know, and they had beautiful technique of uh, watercolor and gouache, and they were able to get these incredible faces, beautiful faces, both the men and the women. We'll close up, we'll do close ups of some of the characters as we go. A lot of the work you did for the Australian um, looks like it's been influenced by, by, this, by this style. Yeah. All that stuff you did in, uh, yeah, so this in, the, is... in the literary pages of the Australian. Yeah, it's a very elegant technique, a very yeah. elegant style. That's a lovely drawing. So even the feet, look at the feet. If you look at the feet on the on the um, the uh, Greek heroes in the plates and everything, you know, they're, they're very long and elegant toes and things like that. So the limbs and the hands and the wrists and the muscles, nothing is sort of... Um, well, it's all storytelling. It's not superhero-ish. It's, it's, they're more like ballet. Yeah, but, but, but in bodybuilders the, in the epic ballet style. In the epic style. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. look at this. This this was magnificent. If I had a poster of this when I was a kid, I would have put it up. This is Argus and Jason getting the Argonauts together. There's Hercules. There's Castor and Pollux. There's um, who is that? That's the Atlanta. And uh, uh, these are the I think they were the. Um, Calais, Zetes, Zetes and Calais, and uh, Acastus. I think Acastus was the son of Agamemnon. He was a traitor. This is Orpheus, you know, the story of Orpheus. So they've actually peppered this story about Jason and the Argonauts with little asides of other stories that the heroes that came on the on the journey, they're, they're, what, what are their backstories? So yeah. obviously the story of Orpheus is a beautiful backstory. The women of Lemnos? Yeah, confused, depending on the stories, it could be the women of Lesbos. Well, Lemnos is an uh, island. It's also a crater on the moon. Yeah, but again, you know, the story is that they, they killed all the men and they took the armor and they became a warrior race. Okay. Look how beautiful that armor is. It's fantastic. And still incredibly... Um, There's quite a lot of... Spelt. Very, very sleek and... Quite a lot of Achilles heels here. Mm. Yes. Not a lot of sandals going on. No, no. It's epic. King Sisychus, yeah. So these are stories, um, this is different to the movie, by the way. You're not going to find a lot of the movie, because um, I saw the movie at the same time. The um, Which movie? Uh, uh, the Argonauts. Oh, okay, Jason Yeah. the Argonauts. Yeah. yeah. The skeleton fight. Jason and the Argonauts. Harry, yeah. Har Harry Harry yeah. Harrison. So there wasn't a lot of similarity between uh, yeah. this story and uh, yeah. the movie, you know. This one sort of went into more classical well, uh, this stories. Is, this is ballet fighting. This is not Jack Kirby, is yeah. it? Yeah. Well, they, these are the backstories of the yeah. characters, you yeah. know, like Hylas and Heracles. Yeah. And um, another, some of Heracles's um, Nice water. Triumphs, you know, his 12 uh, triumphs, yeah. his 12 challenges. 
Um, and the harpies. Yeah, these are beautiful harpies. Yeah. Harpies are a beautiful chimera type of character that you can draw because they're, they're a part human and part bird and vulture and, yep. and, you know, they have these sort of elements. The clashing rocks. That's right, you had to go through the clashing the rocks. Phosphorus, yeah. So in the movie, obviously, you've got, um, who was it? Um, looks like a musical instrument, doesn't Poseidon it? Poseidon stood That's up right. and pushed the rocks aside. That's right. And this is slightly, um, slightly uh, Asian in its appearance. Isn't yeah. It? Well, again, again, you know, the further you get up into the story, into the, the map, mm. right, you're going into Asia. Yes. You're going into Turkey. Yes. So this is really, um, you know, Influence, I think, the journey of uh, of Jason visually that the girls put together. The, the feathers Johnson of girls. the birds from the island of Ares glanced harmlessly from the shields of the Argonauts. Yeah, they they had these metallic um, yeah. feathers which they used as and, darts. And they got their they got their shields on top of their heads. There. Yeah. So here they are, uh, Aetes, the Wizard King. So this is in the Bosphorus. This is like past the Bosphorus. This is in the in the Black Sea. So now you're in Asia. So you can start to see the difference in subtle differences in the um, yep. the uh, design that the girls employed. Mm. You know, this is a very look at those curls. Mm. That's a very Persian, very sort of um, mm. Assyrian sort yes, of look. That's, that's from right. the Gates of Babylon. That's right. Um, this is uh, Medea, his daughter. So this is the love of uh, Jason's life and the bane of his life. Um, but have a look at her fingers. Have a look at her beautiful hands. This is what these girls did. This is, they were so elegant. They were so incredibly elegant. And even when you come to the men, when they did the men, I mean, there's Orpheus, obviously, way in a, in a dream. Um, you know, the men were so incredibly iconic. They were, they were like almost like... You're looking at coins, the busts of yeah. of emperors or something on coins. They're so amazingly uh, uh, designed. They had this a very classical feel, very authentic to the story. Authentic to the story. That's why the illustrations were so powerful. That's Greek, but it's That's also Asian. Them. That's Greek and uh, an Asian. Yes, yeah, yeah. it looks like a very Japanesey sort of. Uh, um, thing it could also be like a, the nightingale illustration yes, yes. from um, yes one of the watercolors uh, back in the in the day hundred years before, prior to this so this is the uh, field of the teeth of uh, the um, oh no this is no in the movie this this is this is the um, the dragon at the end um, but they have to slay the dragon to get the flutes. It Okay, well, the, this this story is different to the movie. Yeah. Okay, so it, the, the field where the warriors rise up is before them reaching the dragon with yeah, the golden right. fleece. Yeah. Right? They, I think they called it a hydra in the movie. Well, it's got... It had several, several, several heads, heads yeah. three heads or yeah. something. Right? So, Colchis is the name of the city. Look at the way that they've designed this. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. I just love the layout. Every single picture, they've actually done so well in illustrating a book because you never know which page the illustration is going to appear or what shape or whether it's going to be a vignette or whether it's going to be a square or it's going to be a double page splash at the top or the bottom or throughout the whole thing. So they kept you on your toes reading the uh, pictures and everything was different. You know, every picture, mm. all of the colors were different. Well, check out those icebergs. Yeah. I didn't know Just he went preparing the Argo. Yeah, I didn't know he went through icebergs. Well, again, this is Depends more, which version more you read, to yeah. the classical story rather well, than that's Hercules the again. movie. That's yeah. Hercules. Yeah. But we'll have a look at and the... And that's Atlas. That's Atlas holding up the, the heavens, yeah. right? Not holding up the earth like in the logos. Yeah. Holding up the heavens. But have a look at Hercules' lion cape. That looks like... The, the happy lion or something from the golden books the disney lion you reckon yeah so i always uh, had a look at that and compared it and it looked very very similar so they these girls loved reading uh kids books at the time this is um Circe, the enchantress have a look at Circe. look at the way look at that profile that's 
fantastic. The balance that's in that, that pose is magnificent. That's a, that is a classy looking illustration. Look at the bronze effect there on the sword. And the patterning, look at that. No, you know, I mean, it's simplified, yes, but when they had a chance to put in these relevant patterns and things to give you a, a sense of uh, place. I can see how you moved on to glint. Yeah. Here. So these are, um, these are not harpies. These are from Korkara. Korfu. Oh, they sing. Yes. The they sirens. Sing. The sirens. sirens. Yeah. So again, they're using bird um, yeah. shapes like the harpies, right? Bird shapes to sort of uh, depict these um, characters. And of course, these are all those sailors that they've they're lured, getting, yeah, they're lured good, to their death. Well, it's a, it's a handy food source. <laughs> uh, the Colchians are, of course, the... Sing for your supper. Yeah. So um, they, Jason and Medea marry. That's another thing. That's another tragedy, isn't it? A play. Uh, la mort de la joie, ship en coeur. Pourquoi? Um, these are the desert nymphs of Libya. Mm. So, you know, beautifully elegant, elegant drawing. Even the, pr even the prickles are ele ele elegant. Yeah, look at that. The reference that they did, these little thistles. That's yeah, Scottish, aren't they? The thistle, maybe? Mm, no, there's different Middle types Eastern of thistles. thistles. But look at the legs, how beautiful they are on the hands. Yeah, they go all the way up to their back backside. So. <laughs> yeah, but the, I mean, and look at their expressions and things, you mm. know. It's, Elfin, really, elfin, -like. Really, elfin like yeah I mean they did such a beautiful job on this book I've never seen Jason and the Argonauts depicted better than this even it, it goes it surpasses the movie as far as exciting um, images are concerned you know because it's not just about superheroes and you know about monsters and stuff it's it's about adventure and th these characters were able to have adventure Well, that's just like the, the Olympic um, runners, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but beautifully done. Yeah. You know, beautifully done, elegant. Beautifully. Yeah, see they love this sort of, it's very Chinese, very graphic in terms of those shapes and things. But these, these girls would have been an asset on an, on an animated film. Oh yeah. my God, have, they would have. Have you um, checked them up on the, on the net? Yes, there's very little about them. Yeah. Um, people that, that have their books like me love them and keep them yeah. um, and revere them. I have a few Pinterest uh, images of them, of their other work, their other um, uh, illustrated books. Um, but this is uh, by far m the most exciting for me because it's this, it's such a varied, you know. I mean, now you're getting into outside of Medea and Jason, yeah. you're getting into um, the story of Theseus. So you're sort of getting a precursor of other legends and things. You're getting a small taste of well, this is starting to look like breath. the Renaissance. Yeah, you know, like yeah, very sort of Persiany sort of looking of the time. Yeah. Yeah, so that's um, that's uh, Jason, that's the Argonauts, Jason and the Golden Fleece. And I would say from looking at your work, that's probably one of the biggest influences on your work. Yeah, one of them. I have many influences, but uh, certainly um, this, this excited me more than the movies. Mm. This excited me. I take it this else. is pre-Jack Kirby for you. This is pre Jack Kirby, yeah. yeah. Jack Kirby never did the. Um, no, but this is pre Marvel of... comics. This is pre Marvel comics for you. No, this would be at the same time. Oh, okay. I would have read comics at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would have been right into Steranko at this period. Not the Jim Steranko. Yeah. Another Almost. Jim Steranko effect. Yeah. Okay, folks. Well, that's it. Um, you've now seen why. Um, Jason and the Golden Fleece is so important to Franz Cantor. Well, it's not just important to me. I, if, if you're interested in the authenticity of an illustration, yeah. of, of illustrating something yeah. with, with 
you know, with the love yeah. of the of the story of the original source too. Yeah, they've gone back to the, yeah the original source and the story itself and mm. the characters. Mm. You know, you can't go past these. It's two beautiful girls. design. So I'll, just, I'll tell you their name again: Janet and Anne Graham Johnston. Yeah, check them out. Okay. Yeah, check, check them, them out. out. Okay, folks. This is Jim Bridges and Franz Cantor saying, "See you next time." Okay. Bye bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.